Okay, so we can rethink how we study indifference curves now that we've built this uh, idea of a utility function. Okay, so where we started with an indifference curve is it's all, if we draw this little diagram and we have this line, it corresponds to all bundles for which the consumer is indifferent. Okay, and that means that's our little notation for indifferent. A little squiggly line uh, indicates that the consumer is indifferent between X and Y. A utility function represents the same preferences using numbers. Okay, so if X is preferred to Y down here, that means that the utility, the number associated with the utility of X is greater than the utility of Y. Okay, and if X and Y are indifferent, if we're indifferent between those two options, it means that the utility associated with X is equal to the utility associated with Y. And that means we can use a utility function to draw an indifference curve by just setting it equal to some number, okay, capital U with a bar over it in this case. And that's going to tell us all combinations of F and S that give us the same utility. And since anything with the same utility we're indifferent to, this gives us an indifference curve, okay? So we can solve for that, and we'll do that in the next, in one of the next videos. But in this one, I briefly want to talk about the slope of these things, okay? So here's an indifference curve. Let's say it's equal to, corresponds to when the utility is equal to 100. This is all combinations of F and S that give us a utility of 100. The slope of this thing matters, okay? The slope has a special name, which I've mentioned before, the marginal rate of substitution. You'll recall the slope of an isoquant was the marginal rate of technical substitution. So this is the same, except we dropped the word technical. There's no technology. It's just people's preferences. So that can help, help you remember, hopefully. And we denote this usually with M, R, S, okay? Now, just as the MRTS, the marginal rate of technical substitution, was equal to the negative marginal product of labor divided by the marginal product of capital, it turns out the marginal rate of substitution, because it's basically the same mathematical structure, has the same kind of rule. This is equal to the marginal utility of shelter divided by the marginal utility of food. Why is that the case? You can do the same kind of argument from uh, total derivative, which I'll briefly go over in the next video. Um, but you know the gist of it, you know the the basic idea is that if you give up one unit of shelter, you're going to lose how much utility? Well, the marginal utility of that. That means it needs to you need to replace that amount of utility. How do you do that? Well, you need to replace it by MUS over MUF, okay? That's how much food is going to be required to replace it. You divide one unit by MUF, multiply by MUS, and that tells you how much you need, okay? And this kind of marginal rate of substitution has the same interpretation as, uh, as sort of this marginal rate of technical substitution. Like, it tells us that the scarce good is sort of more important. Okay, so if I'm all the way over here, this means I live, uh, I have lots of food, I've got like a feast, okay, so we can call this like 5,000 calories a day, and, but I'm living in a tiny little uh, shared apartment, you know, and so if I have to give up a little bit of food, I don't need very much shelter at all to make up for it, okay? You can barely even move that. But if I have to give up, say, a similar amount of shelter, the amount of extra food I need is off the chart in this case, okay? Because I have a lot of food, so more isn't that valuable to me. So in this case, the marginal rate of substitution is, uh, is really steep, so it's really high, okay? If I'm all the way over here, in contrast, now I'm living in a mansion, but I'm really hungry, okay? So if I have to give up some of my food, I'm not going to want to do that. And it's gonna, you're going to have to build me like a whole second house to make me be willing to do that. 
Conversely, if you're going to give me a little bit of extra food, I will give up like half my mansion because I'm not even using it anyway. I'm so hungry just to get that. All right. So now the marginal uh, rate of substitution is really uh, low in this case. It's really flat. The slope is. So anyway, that's the intuition for these marginal rates of substitution. And it turns out we're going to use these uh, a lot in the course.